and welcome back. I haven't actually introduced myself in a while and I know a lot of you here are new, so I'm Rosie and welcome. This is my first ever Let's Play, so hello, thank you for joining me. Today I'm going to do, as I said at the end of last episode, I'm going to cut through and make a big tunnel all the way through to my mining area at the back there. I've got the coordinates for it, but now I need to decide where it's going to go here in the base. This is the main storage area and as I come through I've got all these little caves at the back which have got, you know, ugly little... Um, Auto farms, things like uh, sugarcane and um, 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 vines. I've got vines growing in here somewhere. But somewhere I want to make a tunnel all the way through past this presently undecorated wool farm. So I'm thinking probably out here and then wiggle it back. I don't know how far it's got to go. It's at least a couple of hundred blocks. This was my old strip mine from when I first set up this base. Somewhere around here I need to start going this way until I join up with wherever I need to be. I'll tidy up a little bit as I go, because it doesn't need to be all of this open. I don't want this tunnel to be a straight line. I want it to wiggle and weave, and I would like it to actually come out into some caves as well. So that I can use those spaces for more farms and more storage. Don't just want a straight line. It's going to have to go... Does it have to go up or does it have to go down? I think it might have to go down a little bit, actually. Maybe up. I don't know. It can do a bit of both, I suppose. It doesn't need to go completely straight. How far do I need to go? I need to go... I'm actually pretty much spot on on the Z. Oh, I've got to go up quite a bit. I've got to go up about 15 blocks on the Y. That's interesting. Do that little by little. And I've got, about, got to go about 100 this way. Oh, there's the void. Oh, I need to put torches in, don't I? Or creepers are going to spawn and kill me dead. I love digging. I could just do this for hours. I find it so therapeutic, so calming. The blocks make my brain so smooth. All the worries just run clean off. I'll add more wiggliness as I come to expand the width of this, because this is obviously just very narrow at the moment. Aha, uh -huh, we're here. Okay, I've come off slightly to one side, but that's absolutely fine. I'm still in my allocated tunnel area. And now I just need to widen it. You can see how wide I'd like to make it. It's going to narrow off a little bit as we get to the base and then maybe widen out a little bit more, but I think I want it to be at least five or six wide and maybe whatever this is, five or six tall. So yeah, it's going to be quite big. I'm going to be here quite a while, but I'm happy with that. Time to put on some music and just dig. I think I'll start from this side because this has already got the dimensions roughly worked out. So I'll start here and we'll meet back up at the other place. See you in about three or four hours, I should think. did not take anything like as long as I expected. I think in total that took about an hour and ten minutes. I don't have a beacon, I just have, what is this, efficiency five or four? Efficiency four. If you can even get five, I forget. I forget which numbers go to, well, which enchantments go to which numbers. So yeah, just, just toiling away. Only took an hour and at most an hour and ten minutes. Obviously it needs tidying up. It's still very bare bones. It is still just a very long tunnel. This was great fun, I really loved doing this. And then it comes out into the sheep pen here. I'll tidy up the gateway, which means I'll have to decorate this wall a little bit. Um, I'll maybe at some point expand this room, but I don't think I'm going to do it today. But today I am going to decorate parts of this tunnel. Some of it I'm just going to leave as stone, but I would like to put some details in and I would like to put some caves in. Somewhere up here did put a kind of dent in. We've got this slightly wider patch and it opens up into this little cave bit. I want to push this further back and I would like to make another open bit. I would like one bit to be quite open. I'd like it to be kind of kind of big, like a room held up with uh, stone columns, which I think might be nice to have kind of around here. Yeah, I think this might be a nice spot for it. You come into a tunnel and there might be some more directions going off this way through there. You come out of the tunnel here, well, we come into the tunnel here, and then around here you have a cave bit that opens up which we shall be decorating today, so you'll see what I mean by that. Got quite a lot of coal and copper ore, just by getting what was on the surface here. So I think I'm going to decant my shulkers, because my shulkers are getting quite full. 
I will decant my shulkers and then I will come back and empty out some of the cave areas. Oh, I picked that up with the wrong one. Never mind. I've actually still got one in my inventory. There we are. All empty, ready to go. Digging out this tunnel almost killed my pickaxe. Not quite. I had, thankfully had my uh, my fortune one to switch to, but it's alright because I need some cobblestone anyway, so I'm just going to use the fortune one again for now. That spider spawner is so helpful for getting um, an XP build up. I just go away for my lunch and then I come back and all my tools are fixed in a couple of swipes. Very lovely. Anyway, digging. cave. It's actually not as big as I was planning on making it, but I quite like this size, so I think I'm just going to stop here. Don't need to make it bigger if it doesn't need to be, I suppose. I've got a couple of weird bits where I found patches of dirt when I was digging out, so I've just kind of hollowed them out and left this um, these tall bits in the ceilings, because I quite like that. That feels a bit more natural than having it all be a uniform, uniform height all the way through. This again was a dirt patch, so... May as well make use of it. It's much easier to get rid of dirt than it is to get rid of stone. And I think... I think... Oh, noisy walls again. Yes, just this one little patch here. Which, again, I think was either dirt or gravel, but I just continued it up. So now we've just got a little, a little pocket hiding away up here. So that's all the foundation work done. So now it's time to start decorating. Oh, wait, I've got another one up here as well. This one is very tall because that's, again, where some dirt was. But I'm actually quite liking that. I've got a plan for what I'm going to do there, which I think will be quite pretty. And then I've just messied up the walls a little bit. But yes, anyway, next. Decoration. There's a couple of things I need to go get. I need to get some raw gold ore. The one that hasn't been mined yet. Pick it up, silk touch it. That's what I want. You'll see why. You might even guess why. Don't think I have any in my storage at the moment. I'll just go have a quick check. But if I do have any, I've probably only got four blocks. I maybe want about 15. No, I don't have any. I've got iron, I've got a load of copper, a lot of coal, and then just some for some reason I've got two different stacks of redstone. Okay. I'm also thinking I might need to get some more tough. I have got quite a lot, but I hate to kind of run my supplies down, so I might go see if I can find some more. Just a couple of stacks. I'm sure I've seen some somewhere, but because I need to go quite deep to get some gold ore anyway, then I'll probably find some. So maybe a quick half an hour diversion to go find those things. I'm actually first just going to go empty my shulker boxes and maybe go fix my pickaxes just in case. Here we are again. Whilst I was down here, I thought I would do a little bit more grinding to get some more levels to see if I could get an unbreaking book. That one. There we are. So there we are. That's my last elytra. It's got mending on it. It just needs unbreaking. But I also got two efficiency four books. So I wonder, is it worthwhile getting my pickaxes up to efficiency five? I'll do it on that one. Actually, I need to put the unbreaking on the wings first. There we are. And I've actually got a spare one as well for if I get anything else. They're all efficiency four, aren't they? Oh well, never mind. Three enchanted backup sets of elytra. Also, while I remember, I will just say that this took maybe an hour in total to dig out all of these little cave bits. It didn't take long at all. This one felt like it was going to take ages, but it, it didn't once it got going. I find the easiest way to do it is to kind of cut in where you want to go and then along and make a loop and then once you've got like a an outline of what to dig out it becomes a lot easier to manage. But now I need to go on a little hunt for the gold and the tough. So we'll be back in a minute. If I get this as a mine shaft out here this is probably a good place to go look. I get some more chains while I'm here. Here's some. I would prefer stone rather than deep slate but uh, I'll take the deep slate as well. Getting too deep sleety now. But tough. Okay, come back for that in a moment. Oh yeah, there's a geode here. I need some more of the um, this stuff. I know you can get it elsewhere, but I might just get it while we're here anyway. Some more dripstone too while I'm here. Quite a bit of it. Quite often find diamonds hiding behind tough down at the deep slate levels. Maybe we'll get lucky. I'm not noticing a huge amount of difference with the efficiency 5, to be honest. 
a nice little bonus, but not a great thing to stress about, I don't think. Maybe more noticeable if you've got a full beacon set up. But, uh, I bet it's just the one. Be nice to find some gold back here, too. Yeah, it just looks to be the one. Oh well, we'll take it. Found some more behind the gravel. Just two. Yeah, just two. And we're back. Got the geode stuff, since I'm using that quite a lot, and a bit of dripstone in here. Got some more dripstone, and an awful lot of tuff. I cleared out one section of it pretty much entirely, and that's that's what I got out of it. May as well. And I've got more dripstone, and then here's all the ores. I only got 14 gold. I did get 44 of the deep slate, but of the stone, I only got 14. That's alright. I can work with that. I also did get, is it this one? One. <laughs> one stone diamond ore which I shall also be using in this little project. I'm going to have to sort out this box soon, aren't I? This is all raw stuff that needs to be fortuned. Right, we've got all the stuff ready to go. I have brought the, um, the stone and the cobble and stuff with me as well, and I've got some other things, as you can see. But this is the main box I'm going to work on. I think the only thing I didn't bring is the dripstone. I'll have to go back for that, but never mind. It's just around the corner. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to build the decorative part that's going in here. Then I'm going to put the functional parts around it, and then I will come back in and put the stone columns that are holding it up. Because I don't want the stone columns to obstruct the view too much. I would like it to kind of reveal the view as you come in, as you run past. But I, uh, I don't want it to block the view. So if I build the columns first, they'll probably do just that, which will be annoying. Anyway, time to make this pretty. Well, here's all the uh, here's all the coins and things, and somebody made a very big wish that people have thrown into the wishing well. Is it really a well? It's maybe more of just like a fountain or a, a pond, but it, it's for wishes. Gotta admit, places like this look kind of magical, so what better place to make some wishes? Got some candles for some atmosphere, and also to imply that it's maybe a little bit, a little bit, dare I use the word sacred, to the people here. Presently, it is missing one thing, which is the small drip leaf. I've got the big drip leaf, but I've only got three of the small left, because I don't think you can 
multiply it. I think you can only get it from either harvesting it from lush caves or from wandering traders. And there was very few that I found in my that big lush cave that I've been repeatedly plundering. For now, I've left it kind of open. Uh, you can walk right into it. But when I've got free roaming villagers, I might have to fence it off a little bit. It depends how much trouble they cause, if they keep constantly trying to get in the water. If they want to go for a quick paddle, they're, you know, they're allowed. But uh, if they're constantly getting stuck in there, then I might have to fence it off. For now, it's open. But I'll give you a quick guided tour of the rest of the cave. I have left some kind of bare patches where I'll probably end up tunnelling out to make more of the auto farms. Anyway, time for a quick run through. I haven't done anything here yet because this room needs work and might possibly be changing, we'll see. We'll come into here, it's just a little bit of brickwork and a little bit of andesite. A little bit of storage, you know how I love my heaps of storage. So this, this kind of like hidden underground lagoon bit is not that far from the, from the sheep, that's literally the corner. So it's quite close in. There is also just this little nook up here which is kind of cute. Nothing up there, it's just cute. Got another little lush patch here. This one in here, I've just... It's just that. I haven't done anything with it yet. I feel like this might become a doorway to another another auto farm. But uh, for now, it is this. Got a big patch of dripstone, which is kind of blocking the path a little bit, but eh, I don't care. Now these sort of bare patches of wall are likely where I'm going to put other tunnels. There's one here as well. This side could probably end up with a, a tunnel in it. This is the other kind of chamber. It's not really a room, it's just been opened out a little bit. We've got some workstations, like we've got the uh, the cartographer's table here, and a grafting table, and the saw, because I, I always need these things. And again, just a, a little a little pocket. And lastly, there's a very tall bit of moss, with another waterfall in it. This one's not a wishing well, they haven't put uh, any coins in here, but yep, still pretty. And then we're out. I haven't done anything with the outside yet, and I think I'm going to leave that for another episode. Because I want to just get on with the crane. I think I'm just going to sleep and get some daylight back. Come on, you can come look at the uh, you can come look at the waterfall bit. He's having a good look around. There you go. Mind your nose, though. Mind your nose on those candles. Now, I need to decide where I'm putting the crane. I was going to put it so that it was pulling an amethyst out of here. But if the crane is to be lifting the amethyst higher than the rim of the crater, they're back again, then it would need to be very, very tall, which I don't really want it to do, or it would have to be very big and leaning over from the sides. Because that's unfortunately very low down and right in the middle. So I'm wondering if there's a better place to put the crane, and I'm thinking maybe over here somewhere, so that it's pulling a geode maybe from this pocket here, where we mentioned before, maybe put in another one. It's pulling something up from here, but he's also a kind of sensible size, proportionate to the rest of the mine. Because that way I can maybe have a couple, I don't have to just have one crane, I can have multiple around the edges, whereas if it's one big giant one, I feel like it would have to service the entire mine, and that, that feels a bit too big for what these hypothetical villagers are building. I'm presently thinking that down here somewhere, the actual geode, and then the crane up here-ish. Let's go have a look. Yeah, this feels all right. I could bring this out a little bit and level it off to make a cliff here, and then a, a flat surface for the, the crane to stand on. And then there's a sensible drop so that the, the geode can be lifted up. I keep thinking that's a creeper. Yeah, it would look really nice from down here as well, because the gem would be somewhat hidden behind these patches of trees. I might take some of these down or make them like partially taken down so it looks like it's in the process. And then have the crane kind of there and the gem kind of there. That might be nice. I do keep saying that I would like this entire camp, this entire settlement to be traversable by foot. So I like to consider the views and how they unfold, and that would be a that would be a very nice one. I might go use a dirt pillar just to decide how high the the amethyst has to go. Yeah, that's good. So for the amethyst to be on the top there and then for the crane to be in that sort of position. Yep, I like that. I think that's certainly better than having it looming right over here. Like I say, there will be other cranes, there might be other things looming over, but it might be quite nice to keep this open a little bit more so you can still see all the geodes, you can see the paths up, 
if you're on the other side and you're looking across, you can still see what will be a, a nice cavern entrance there. As for this, I think I will still just leave this as a hole. I will expand it, I'll take it all the way down as far as I kind of feel fits. I brought a few supplies, mostly stone and dirt, because that's what I'm going to need. And I'm just going to make the little platform that this is going to stand on. The crane is going to need to be nice and secure. If it's going to be lifting heavy weights, it doesn't want to just be on the grass. You want it on a lot of rock and a nice sturdy cliff. So I need to take away some trees and build the foundation. That's come out nice. That looks really balanced. It's not a big exposure of cliff that's out of place with the rest of the um, the rest of the crater, but it's not a little thing either. It's it's a big supporting cliff face that is going to hold up the crane. Yep, that looks nice. Now it's time to get on and actually build the crane itself. I'm quite happy with how this came out. I'll be honest, I don't actually understand 100% how they work. Like, I appreciate weight pulls it down, lifts that one up, counterbalancing all that jazz, but uh, yeah, the technical details I don't really understand with a lot of mechanical things. I am not a particularly mechanically minded person, but I think it, it, it certainly is a crane, and it has done what I wanted it to do, which was lift the amethyst above the rim. So anything that was trundling along here, having a little wander, nice day out in the sunshine, he's going to see that very easily. Yep, there it is. Peekaboo. I quite like the design for this crane, so I might make a couple more. Maybe scale it down a smidge. It is very tall and very snooty. Maybe maybe scale it to about there and maybe about that kind of that kind of scale. Maybe like a third off. That'd be quite nice to have a, a couple of them around the edges for lifting crates and boxes towards the railways that will be coming along at some point. Here's the amethyst that they were pulling this chunk from. I feel like they've pulled it from this bit and left the um, left the shell behind and just taken the crystal part up. Pulled a load of roots and dirt with it. And it looks really nice from out the tunnel as well. I like the fact that it's in the sky, that it is clear of all the trees. I might take these trees out at some point, or at least thin them. I'm, I'm very happy with how that came out. I'm not used to building things like this. I had to do a little bit of research looking at real cranes and trying to figure out how you could emulate some of the, the construction with just the textures, and yeah, spruce planks and oak planks are pretty much the only way to go, <laughs> using the trapdoors and lots of buttons. Copper is very helpful. But that probably will be it for today, I'm afraid. This has been a very long episode again in terms of filming. But what shall we do next week? I don't think I want to come back here again, because we've done two weeks in a row here, so I'd like to move somewhere else. I'm thinking we make a start on the harbour bit down here. I've actually had a few... Um, a few ideas about this area. I think I was just thinking too small. I need to make it bigger, I need to make it grander, make it more like um, a town down here rather than just the farmland. Well, I'm thinking that we come back here next week and we start mapping out 
where I want this settlement to go and what kind of shape I want it to have and then I'll start clearing the trees a little bit and I'll put some of the groundwork in, maybe a building or two. I've kind of really had a change of heart about this being farmland, I like the idea of this being a medieval port town, something a bit like that, but again, with this kind of theme, continuing these shapes and these colours, and of course, wolfies. But it's, um, it's a big long stretch of land where this river curves around, so it would be um, really nice to get this set up, so then when I want to build something on it, I can just build something on it. Put in some different layers, have some little buildings, some big buildings, leave some spaces for future plans. Maybe have some kind of tower at the end there, since that is so far away. Yeah, I'm, I'm liking the idea of that. I'm liking that being our next step. I still have some llamas in a hole. But once again, thank you very much for watching, and I hope you enjoyed. Hope to see you next time. Bye bye for now. Oh, hello. Hi. Have a steak. <laughs>